Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver yeah, now. RoadToRuda.com. It is all happening. It is all happening as we speak. Uh, yesterday on the private road, I posted a, um analysis slash discussion about a video that was posted. Um, it's an interview with the, the chairman of the board of the Silver Institute. It is a shocking interview. Um, it basically affirms everything I've been saying for eight, nine months now um, that the Silver Institute should have been telling you. Uh, this guy, Phillips Baker, the head, head guy at Hecla, yeah, he, I wasn't impressed at all, um, although he, he did confirm everything I've been saying about solar, about, um, but this was a setup. This whole interview was a setup. It's f- from Kitco Mining, uh, Kitco, as you guys know, if you follow the road to Ruta, they're in bed with the with the riggers, 100%, um, because they got this ridiculous program of, uh, of uh, pooled silver, derivative trading they've got been busted you know by by the silver community for a very long time um you know when people pool when entities pool silver and say hey this is the cheapest silver you can find you'll own part of this pool of silver um back a while ago the perth mint was doing it the uh royal bank of canada was doing it the the u.s wasn't doing it Supposed because they have their own derivative program for their inventory. Uh, but the obvious problem was that those mints run out of silver all the time. And when they run out of silver, that means there's nothing in the pool. That means the entire investment um, analysis and, and the reason for investing would be wrong. Because you won't have any silver when the mints run out of silver. But you, you own part of that silver pool, but there's nothing in the pool. Uh, and that's what they wouldn't tell you. Anyway, that Kitco was involved in that. Might still be, I don't know. But this was a complete setup, this video. I analyzed it on the road to Ruta. Go check it out. Um, this guy is supposed to be, the guy interviewing is supposed to be some expert in uh, the solar photovoltaics. Doesn't even mention China, which is the number one topic for any solar analysis in silver. Number one. He's like, oh, yeah, silver is going crazy in uh, solar, but that will end. That will end. It'll tr- he, he, he throws out the old bullshit that there's thrifting, 5.1% thrifting, which is a crock of shit. I'm sorry. You're just <laughs> flat out wrong. Um, they're actually using more and more silver, especially with Topcon, obviously. Um, but this guy, but, but then, you know, you get to thinking, why did they do it? And I know exactly why they did. When was the last time you saw Phyllis Baker on a YouTube video? I don't. I don't recall ever seeing him. I mean, I'm maybe in a in a discussion at a silver conference or something like that. But um, why now? Because the Silver Institute is about to release the Silver Survey, and they are sh- up the creek without a paddle. They've been lying to the people for so long, and they're going to try to change their numbers. And they want to change the way you think. They want you to think that silver is not an investment metal. Silver is not a jewelry metal. Silver is not a silverware metal. Silver is not anything but industrial metal, and that's all. Um, and pre- <laughs> and he failed miserably at it. Um, but what he did say, and one of the most important things, is he said that uh, the silver use in solar is going to be at or above 300 million ounces which is almost double what they were last year. So the Silver Institute, who should have been telling you this for the last eight months, who did not, and I was screaming about it, and I've entered, had discussions with both the head of the Silver Institute and the head of Metals Focus about this, it looks like they're going to report it. now, And they, that means they're going to have to massage their other numbers like they do uh, and change numbers. We will not stand for any changes. Historical changes of numbers that you reported and if you change those numbers, you must give a clear identification of why. Why must you do it? It's very simple. People use those numbers in, in making investment choices. And if you change the numbers without telling people why historical numbers have changed, you are misleading the public, and that is illegal in commodity law. And obviously, 
Michael DiLorenzo or whatever his name is, the head of the Silver Eagle Institute or the uh, Silver Institute, uh, knows this because he apparently helped write. He he was the main guy. He told me who, to write the Silver Eagle Law, um, which I call bullshit on. But it, a lot of it's bullshit. So go listen to the on the private road to road. I do a full discussion of what these guys are trying to tell you, trying to make you think. And then the revelations that, oh, my God, we have a shocker coming out on April. I think it's April 17th when they released the Silver Institute report because their number is going to change from 140, 140 million ounces back in uh, the last report. 140 million ounces the last time they reported anything on silver, on solar silver. That, that number is going to change from 140 to over, well, right around 300. We're not sure. He said it was over 300. This guy uh, who was interviewing him said it was just under 300. Anything close to that, I was told it was going to be 180, and that's why I was going nuts. But we knew this all along. Don't let them say, oh, it was a surprise by the end of the year. It was not a surprise. Nobody was surprised in the solar industry. If they were surprised, they weren't surprised. The problem was they were hiding the fact. And that's the problem with the Silver Institute. They are not on the side of the silver investor. They are on completely on the side of the silver market riggers, meaning the industrial market riggers. Now, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, 99.999% of the population does not want high silver prices. They don't give a shit about fair market value, what fair market value is. You know, nobody wants to pay quadruple for their cell phone, their flat screen TV, but what happens when you just when you destroy free market pricing, you get massive shortages, which is what we're living in right now. And no, China hasn't stopped making solar panels. They're going to double again this year. And the, the analysts will be wrong once again. And I loved that in this interview, um, the heckle guy, uh, Phyllis Baker, the, the uh, what do they call him? Chairman of the board of the Silver Institute says exactly that. Everybody's been wrong on solar. They haven't been wrong on solar. <laughs> yeah, they have been wrong. They either been wrong or lying. It's obvious. China it now can make, I think it's 600 gigawatts per year. And they are making them. And they are stuffing all the warehouses if they can't install them right away. And one of the interesting things is, uh, this guy Phyllis Baker says that, uh, quote, photovoltaics are the central bank of silver. I would take exception to a lot of that shit. I mean, if you're really gonna gonna say that photovoltaics is a central bank, you're saying, oh, they rig, rig the silver market. Is, is that what you're saying? Potentially, yeah, there you go. Because China takes up, you know, they build ninety percent, eighty-five to ninety percent of the solar panels. So, are they rigging the price of silver, or are you saying that all that silver is being banked for later? And I think that's what he was alluding to. Because there's massive amounts of silver going in. The reality is, <laughs> we can't figure out a way to recycle it that makes money. Well, obviously not at this amount. Uh, the price of silver. You can't you can't pull silver out at 25 bucks an ounce. At 2500 bucks an ounce, you might be able to. Potentially. It's going to cost a lot of money. Um, and do I think 2500 bucks an ounce is the price of true fair market value of silver? I don't know. So it's not like silver's just being rigged and this is just some, you know, out of the blue thing that's going to happen to silver. No, it's been rigged for 180 years, 180 years of price suppression, going all the way back to the uh, the opium wars in China. And it just intensified when they invented the computer programs. Alan Greenspan in the early 70s invented the computer programs to rig all markets. That intensified the silver manipulation. So yes, silver and gold, silver will be one-to-one -one with gold. All of a sudden, everybody will be going, oh my God, you, do you have silver? I'm thinking I'm melting my fillings down. <laughs> That's how important this is. The retail silver has gone to zero. It's practically nothing. Nobody buys silver unless there's excitement in the market. And that's a gigantic mistake, my friends, a gigantic mistake. Just keep dollar, dollar cost averaging in or buy as much silver as you can. Load up the truck. Because when silver goes above 30, the comics will shut down. Why am I saying that? Because the shorts will be, they're losing, oh, what was it, uh, 150, 200 million. The big shorts per dollar it rises. 
So a $10 rise is a massive loss for even the biggest banks. A $30 rise, a $100 rise destroys J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, HSBC. Did you know HSBC is still the massive silver short? Because they are on the comics. They're delivering every month. Look at the last four or five months. They have been the biggest deliverer for the past five months, which means they were the biggest short, holding right to the end. Um, they have issued 38% of the shorts in the last, since December. 38%. Matched only by J.P. Morgan taking 43%. So, I mean, it tells you right there, HSBC has not left the silver market, like a lot of people have said. it. They are the biggest, uh, well, excuse me, J, uh, HSBC customer. HSBC customer, just like J.P. Morgan. When J.P. Morgan got busted for rigging the silver market, sorry to tell you, Jeff Christian, yeah, they got busted for rigging the silver market and colluding, which is a RICO charge. Um, all they did was change their rigging operations from their own house account to the customer account, and that can be seen because they do 43% of all the deals. It's not a market when you have massive players like J.P. Morgan doing 43% of everybody on the planet of comics. <laughs> And HSBC delivering 38% of everybody on the planet on the comics and deliveries. That's not a free market. Rustin Benham should be ashamed of himself. He you should be ashamed of yourself, but for various other reasons. Anyway, silver keeps running. <clears throat> it won't get exciting until about 30 bucks, and then all eyes will be on it. I think it'll run to probably 30 bucks right when the announcement comes on April 17th. I think it's the 17th. 17th or 18th. And that will be the, the annual Silver Institute Silver Survey. Now, I'm going to go over it with a fine tooth comb for you guys. My, my, from this setup interview, it does seem like, it does. I do believe they're going to have the amount of solar silver used double because they, there's no other way they can do it. So I'm expecting, instead of 180 like they had on their last announcement, um, I'm expecting close to 300. Uh, if they go over three, it should be, I have it like 350 <clears throat> on a conservative basis. Conservative basis is 350 because they made all the extra inventory too. But it's the, the key thing there is to make sure we hold their feet to the fire to everything else because the solar they can't lie about because it's too obvious. <laughs> it's a simple cal calculator. So it went up 76%. So the amount of silver used actually went up. So it should be more than 76%. But they're going to go right around 76%. They might do 300. Oh, shocking. We just found out. No, you've known it for eight months and you didn't tell any of the silver investors. And now all of a sudden, silver investors are going, oh my God, so there's silver. It's just infuriating. And it's being hidden because. They don't want the price to get away, especially before this election. Now, the good guys behind the scenes, yeah, they're going to take everything down. The bad guys want to take shit down, and the good guys want to take shit down before the election. The bad guys want to take it down, number one, because they have no candidate. There's, Biden will not be our next president. He, there will be no presidential debates, obviously. It will be shocking to people how much our, our country changes between now and November what is it, fifth or whenever the election is? Shocking. That's that's only what uh, eight months. Our entire country is going to change in eight months. So hang on to your silver, hang on to your cryptos. Yeah, so they go down, they go up. They can click a mouse and put cryptos anywhere they want, just like silver, just like the stock market, the bond market. Are you surprised? Oh my God! Can you believe the stock market's gone up? <laughs> it's a it's a mouse click for the exchange stabilization fund, which is a, a a fund set up run out of the U.S. Treasury. There's a trading floor in a basement of the U.S. Treasury. I've been talking about that for years. It's run out of the Fed, New York, that colludes with the banks to rig all prices, especially now and especially in times of trouble. I don't know if they're going to put silver down to three dollars with a click of a mouse. Or put it up to a million dollars to make sure that nobody in India... Ch India has sh completely shut down their silver buying since uh, the price went over $25. India hasn't bought an ounce of silver, as far as I can tell, and uh, since March 15th. Oh, by the way, 
the U.S. Mint hasn't made a silver eagle. It hasn't sold one silver eagle since the first week in March. What a fraudulent institution. And it's still on allocation, meaning the, the dealers can't buy as much as they want. They're limited on the amount. This is so much fraud coming out of the U.S. government. This is what destroys free markets and destroys countries. And we all know that the Biden, <laughs> Biden government is trying to do just that. That's the Democrat plan. Open the borders, let everybody in, destroy the United States of America, turn it into a socialist country. Start with the mint. And they are right here. 850,000 silver eagles were sold in March, one of the lowest months in history. Shocking. <laughs> Ventress Gibson, you suck. Janet Yellen, why'd you tell her to stop selling silver eagles? I have it on tape. <laughs> All right, uh, going back, yes, uh, get your silver reels if you can. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you want to buy when nobody's buying. And nobody on the retail side, nobody's buying. On the wholesale side, China's soaking it all up. The, the, as, as the head of the Silver Institute says, the, uh, the, solar, the solar panels are the central bank of silver. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, please. The stupidity on planet Earth right now. In, in so many other levels, not just what I'm talking about. I'll be talking to Jenny Moonstone tomorrow. Lots of good stuff coming down the line. Um, but go, you guys on the private road, go check out uh, my full analysis um, of this discussion. Because it was done for a reason. And it's done to get people thinking a certain way. All right, I want to show you something. This is the, uh, going back to 1928, the long-term chart of silver. Um, this is a little misleading because this actually does go to $50, but it was intraday and it went down. Uh, in 1980, what happened was the Hunt brothers, they were buying silver. Were they trying to break the bank for the U.S. government? Yeah, of course they were. Um, did the U.S. government shut them down? Absolutely, 100%. But it wasn't just the Hunt brothers. Everybody was out there buying silver because the price had gone up. That's why people buy and then all of a sudden they changed the rules on the comics and they shut down the Hunt Brothers and they artificially slammed the price of silver to make it put it into a bear market from 1980 to 2000, probably 2000, right around 2000. That's when I started really investing in silver in 2000. Um, and it was in a bear market. That's an artificial bear market. It went to $50 in a true fair market value and then they had to rig it to get it lower. So 1980 wasn't the high... The, the natural high for silver. Same thing in 2011, J.P. Morgan Chase took over the Bear, Stern, Bear Stearns massive short position in silver. They instituted a guy named um, Bill Daly. Bill Daly was on Jamie Dimon's SWAT team. They put him as the number two guy next to the president, the president's chief of staff for Obama. Look it up, Bill Daly. Started in the beginning of 2011, J.P. Morgan ran the price up to $50, and then slammed it down using their derivatives to get uh, start the next artificial bear market. We're coming out of that right now. Right after that was done, the next, in, after 2011 was done, Bill Daly left as Obama's chief of staff. He had one duty, go rig the silver market. And they did. So we don't know what the real, you know, if you're looking at graphs and charts, the all-time highs are all fake. This is a complete rig job by the powers that be. And it is ending. So you want to be, I mean, according to this chart, we, you draw a line from here to here and you're going to, you know, a couple hundred bucks. If you look at the amount of money created since 1980, the amount of derivatives created, the amount of stocks and bonds and, and fake instruments created, silver should be five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 right now. And it is going there. I don't even look at price anymore. I look at the gold-silver ratio gold silver ratio should be at a minimum of 3 to 1 because that's how it's coming out of the ground. It's coming out of the ground at 7 to 1, but the majority of it, and even more now, so it might be we're at 1 to 1 probably because 100% coming out of the ground supposedly now is going into industrial, according to the head of the Silver Institute, industrial silver. And they think all that's going to be supplied by investors. Investors aren't going to want their silver. 
as the price goes up, all the investors are going to sell. That's the exact opposite of what actually happens. As the price goes up, the rest of the world tries to get in. And that's where we're headed. Silver is going to unobtainium, meaning you can't get it at any price for a while. All right. Um, interesting uh, post here from the Citizens for Sound Money. HB 1955 has been merged with HB 2257 and passed an executive session out of the Financial Institute Institutions Committee in Missouri with an 8-3 to three vote. Uh, Constitutional Money Act is on the way to make Missouri the first state in the union to make gold and silver legal tender and electronically transactional. Interesting, electronic, electronically transactional. I hope they've talked to Reggie Middleton about using the blockchain because you can't use the blockchain unless you get Reggie's permission for stuff like that. I don't make the, the patent rules. That's what Reggie Middleton has a patent on. All those cryptos out there that are attached to gold and silver, all the DeFi cryptos out there, you better get Reggie's approval at some point. Now, it's going to take him winning his case against Coinbase, which I think he already has. The The, uh, the patent office has already said, because uh, Coinbase tried to get it thrown out. The patent office said, no, this is a, you're violating his patent. <laughs> It hasn't gone to court yet because Reggie's uh, lawyer passed away. But I tell you, the wor like I said, the world's going to be very different in eight months before the election. Um, and if you're looking for when does silver really hit that exciting point, it could be the, uh, the publication of the Silver Institute's numbers. And I'm just really interested. I'm, not, I'm really not even interested in what's going on with silver anymore because we already know that. So they're going to have to say that. The question is, which other numbers do they change to try to make it so it's not that big a deal? And from what they were saying, they're going to change coins and bars and everything. They've got to change everything. Or they got to announce the silver deficit tripled or quadrupled. They don't want to do that. So keep an eye out. I'll be analyzing it. But it will be a shocker for silver. So get your silver now. And this could be why we're seeing this slow and steady rise in silver. Um, this is today's chart. Gotta love that. Slow and steady wins the race. I don't want a big spike to 30 and then get slammed down again. I want people get, to start finding out about silver. Why silver? Why silver? You listen to Road to Ruta, you've, you've got a good handle on why silver. I was looking at Zero Hedge. I like to look at, pick out one article that's kind of crazy, and every single one was. Every <laughs> see, look at this. Backlash is real. The DEI exodus. This is the uh, diversity, equity, and all that. Uh, gain steam across. Exodus gain steam across corporate America. Bidenomics failure shows up as Gen Z polls revolt against the Democrats. Disney report reportedly has votes to defeat pets train in proxy fight. Blah blah blah. Must throw support behind activist investor. What's going on with the uh, PMI prices? Yeah. By the way, if you didn't know, um, inflation's going through the roof, but the U.S. government doesn't want to tell you about it. Uh, Japan, crazy earthquake over there, just nuts. Office tower vacancy rates hit record high. Those have not been reported by the banks yet. Those are any day now. Any day now, we're going to start to see people run out of the banks, and that's when it gets really ugly. Again, with it now, we got eight months, and it's not going to take up to the eighth month. Pretty soon, they're going to be sent. Democrats will be sent. oh, they, I heard they wanted to put Michelle Obama or Michael Obama, whatever you want to call him, as, as the, uh, the president instead of Joe Biden. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> Anthony Blinken Jeff suffers mechanical issues again. Um, there's just, just too much craziness to even start. All you can do, literally all you can do now, is have a little bit of cash on hand for two or three weeks of insanity, if it gets that ugly, no one will have cash to make change, so you don't need that much cash. Um, you want a little bit of uh, cryptos on hand for the future, not for the present. And you want a hell of a lot of physical silver. And if you have gold right now and you like gold, swap all your gold for silver now. And then when the ratio comes into where it's kind of supposed to be, maybe at a minimum 10 to 1 just historically. But remember, historically... We didn't use all this silver, and it's not all the landfills anymore. We didn't use silver as an industrial metal. Now we are, so that silver is gone. Those who think that the, the solar panels are a central bank of silver, 
are smoking hopium. <laughs> and because if they are, it's going to cost them, what, a couple hundred bucks an ounce just to get it out of the silver panels. So you're getting a higher price for that. And then what are you going to use for energy? <laughs> solar panels are, are installed for 25 to 30 years, 40 years. So you better think long and hard about <laughs> what the hell is going on with the physical silver today. Get it in your own possession. That's the only thing you can do. And then for gold, gold uh, people who swap, say you have 100 ounces of gold, you swap it for silver today, you wait for the silver to be freely traded, and all of a sudden you can buy it would probably 10x that. So you have 1,000 ounces of gold instead of 100 ounces of gold. If you love gold, swap it for silver now. Andy Sheckman does gold and silver swaps. Contact him. Uh, info at milesfranklin.com. I'll be talking to Andy very soon here. Lots going on in that world. The retail, he's telling me the retail is dead. The retail silver buyers are dead. Why? Because the price isn't going up. When it hits 30 bucks, everybody and their mother is going to be calling up Andy. I need the silver. And he's not, he's, I don't know when we're going to get it. Nobody can get any silver right now. That's what's going to happen. All right, that's what I got for you. Uh, I put back up the uh, where, where my numbers are for uh, photovoltaic silver. I'm at 350 million ounces. Um, again, the Silver Institute was at 140, and I hear, based on this interview, it's going to be up near 300, which they're going to have to massage away and explain away. The deficit will be the biggest in history for last year. Um, <clears throat> there's no way that they can dance around it. They're going to try, though. Um, and India is on fire every time the price goes below $25. So I'd say 25 bucks is the floor. Um, anything under 25, India is going to be buying literally hundreds of millions of ounces. And China's still buying anyway. They get it through ETFs. They get it through the COMEX uh, exchange for physical, through LBMA. They get it everywhere they can get physical silver. They're probably going to start buying silver eagles. That's maybe why... The U.S. Mint has stopped selling silver eagles. By the way, contact the Mint. Say, what the hell are you doing? You work for the American people. Start selling silver eagles again. Anyway, this is Big Swear. Uh, join the private road at Road to Road. You get all this information. Um, and we're currently sending out one Veritasium token. This is your crypto life insurance. Reggie has the patent for DeFi, has the patent for uh, CBDCs, has the patent for all the crypto coins that are uh, attached, quote, attached to gold and silver, which I think that will be part of the future of the U.S. Um, so you better have at least one Veritasium. Cliff High has the price of Veritasium going higher than the price of Bitcoin. I don't know if that means very goes up or Bitcoin comes down, uh, but he's very bullish on Bitcoin, so probably Veritasium would go up. So we give that away with every uh, one-year membership to the private road at Road to Ruta. Go to RoadToRuta.com. I'll talk to you later. Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now.